So about six weeks ago, Leah and I moved out of our tiny apartment to go and live with our parents for a couple of months. And we find ourselves into that trip living in an even tinier cabin in the woods. And yes, I still have a mullet. <laughs> Hey team, welcome back to another Levi's Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today we're going to be talking about the guest cabin that my dad has built on our family property. We're also going to be talking about some of his building practices and why he chose to build a little tiny home on his property. But before we get into any of that, I have to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to be talking about how you can use Skillshare to start your next career or hobby today. Now, if you follow either Leah or I on Instagram or you're part of the Patreon community, you might have seen some hints to this little cabin and you might have even known that I was going to make a video about it. I think that this cabin symbolizes a lot of the principles that I was raised with and it gives you a real insight into how I was brought up and the context where I came from when I was a kid. So I hope that you really enjoy this video because I got a ton out of this personally and as a creator. The cabin is only 100 meters or so down from the house and it even has its own private driveway. This cabin was 100% built by my dad and you'll see a lot of his craftsmanship showing through as we do the tour. My dad has been a cabinet maker and an artist for most of his life and he really believes that functional things should have art imbued in them and that art itself should be functional as well. So you're going to see a lot of that influence in this cabin. Now my dad is not exactly the type of person who likes to be on camera. Who knows where I got it from? So I've convinced him to come out and help us give this tour. So let's go and check it out. What, uh, what do you want me to wear? I don't know, whatever you're wearing there is fine. Is this okay? Yeah, it's fine. I don't think people are gonna be judging based on your clothes. They're gonna be judging based on your carpentry and your handyman skills. Not how handsome I am? I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a t-shirt okay like is this okay no, like is that good. enough vein are the glasses are okay oh, yeah, yeah, i love cool. the glass my nervous level is uh i don't know probably a six out of ten okay that's good that's good that's not ten okay let's get into it so uh here we are this is this is my dad guy do you want to go by Guy or <laughs> guy is fine uh, he's the person who brought this building into existence, and so he's going to be doing the tour with us today. Um, so right off the bat, I think like the outside of this building does not look like many buildings, and I, I thought it'd be just important to like clarify what this is. Like, why did you do the the outside of the building in this way? Why did I do it like that? First of all, it was uh, uh, an experiment I wanted to do. I've seen many architecturally designed buildings with plywood on the outside and I always thought that was such a cool idea. And it's it, very inexpensive. What was it like having me help you put all this up? You were you were surprisingly good actually. <laughs> yeah, you were good. No, you were you were good. Rough guesstimation, how much would you think that this whole building cost from beginning to end? Uh, I'm gonna say forty thousand. And that's not including the, the labor that you just did yourself? Yeah, that's no labor, that's just all yeah. materials. Yeah. But this is a fairly luxurious building, like these, these posts and beams, you didn't need to make them as big and as rugged as they are, like you could have simplified the build and used cheaper materials to... Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Should we go inside? Let's, uh, let's, start, the, let's start the movement. What is the square footage of the, of the space? Uh, 250 square feet. 250 square feet. I actually guessed it more than that. Yeah, that was done for a reason. A uh, couple of things. I put a vaulted ceiling in, in, which I don't normally like, but it gives you a sense of space. And everything's been scaled down. Like these walls are actually only seven feet something, which yeah. normally it's eight feet because I wanted to make the footprint smaller. The doors are all, they're all small doors. They don't look like it. If you look at them, it looks fine, right? And you built the doors and you built the frames and all the... the yeah, stuff. built the doors, built the frames, so built the windows. So everything in here is custom, basically. Built this window, built everything. Yeah. Over on the left here, we have uh, basically the kitchen. No running water. We get everything out of this tank, which we fill at the main house. Um, all of this cabinetry was made from wood that you 
mill here from logs that were on this site. Yeah, they're dead, standing dead pine. And, and basically this was probably logged like, if not on this location, just nearby. Yeah, on the, look, on the property for sure. So the trees removed are actually sitting right here. Yeah, it's beautiful wood, look at it. We don't use this space quite as maybe a guest would that isn't associated with my mom and dad. Like we don't cook down here because we'd rather cook with them and spend time with them up at the house. But uh, the whole thing can basically be self-sufficient. Probably my favorite part as somebody who used to live in a house that used to have wood heat and now coming back to visit, the fireplace has got to be, uh, I don't know, such a, such a like warming thing for me. Why did you choose to, to put in wood heat? Well, I think it's your uh, backcountry experience, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to come in here and turn on an electric heater, right? Yeah, I feel like that would be very blasphemous. Right. So we looked around for a, the size was the most important. We had to get the smallest stove we could find. But this thing, it warms up and we've lit it a few times because it's been super rainy and you need to light one single fire and this place was like super warm. I'd, li I'd like to mention something about the siding because the siding was actually a... Uh... Skeddy Shack was uh, a guy named Skeddy who had a like a hunting, hunting cabins. Yeah. And so when I went in there for the first time, he had the interior siding was randomly cut for planks. So that's where this sort of concept came from where, you know, this is 10 or 11, this is 10, you know, that's 12, that's eight. And it gives you a random feeling. If they're all the same, yeah. then it just gives you that manufactured look. It's subconsciously in your mind, you never looked at the wall and went, oh, it all adds up. Right. You're doing that subconsciously. You look at this wall, they're all different. So it well, it makes it feel a little bit more wild, I think. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same material that you used on the outside. Yeah. As yeah. well. And the roof. So the yeah. entire space is made out of right. a handful of materials. Almost all of the furniture in this place has been restored in some way. So this is my grandfather's sitting chair. No, this is your great grandfather's. This is my great grandfather's sitting chair. And you re you recovered it from Plum Coulee. Yeah, Southern Manitoba. Yeah. Where where they were, uh, where they immigrated to, I guess. Yeah, in 1905, I think they... So this, this chair is almost 100 years old. 115. This is what I associate with your work, is this sort of intentionally aged kind of material. Why do you, why do you like old stuff? Um... I don't, well, because I don't like new stuff very much. <laughs> Especially furniture, you know, it's... Uh... So you wouldn't go to Ikea? Uh, Ikea has its place. I would buy some things from Ikea. Really? Because they have a design element to them that makes sense to me in a lot of ways. Okay, maybe there's going to be an Ikea video coming in the future. We'll have to see. No, Ikea does some pretty good stuff. This lamp is created by a local artist. Um, Trish Chung. Oh, that's nice, eh? It looks really crazy, um, but it is super functional. This is this is an art piece that is used for a specific purpose. As a, as a light source in here in the nighttime, it feels like there's a little fire being lit almost. Wait, but there's also one thing there's that I more. actually built. What? What did you build? Oh, the stairs. Yeah, you got <laughs> uh, These stairs were built by me, as you can see. Not going anywhere. <laughs> These are just two by fours and, and one two by six and just this is just a really big piece of wood. Uh, and then and then we have this is the safety shovel. What is it for? Yeah, why 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 is there a shovel on the outside of it's a World War One trenching shovel. Really? Yeah. How did you I mean, can't remember why we put it here and then we just left it there. See, USA. I looked it up. It's worth like a hundred bucks. I think it goes with the pioneer kind of, uh, you know, hunter cabin kind of vibe though. Yeah. I think it fits. Yeah, and I was into, you know, World War I history, right? So. And, then our, uh, and then our final experience lies behind us, the outhouse. So you actually built the outhouse before you built the guest cabin. Yes. So why did you build an outhouse in the first place if you didn't have a guest cabin? Because uh, we didn't. We only had one bathroom in the house. So, so you wanted a safety bathroom? Yeah. So in case I went to... in there first. 
So this outhouse was originally built as an art project, essentially. Yeah, it's been in uh, at least two art shows. Yeah, and and this used to have kind of a variety of different artwork in it. Like it was it was an installation piece that people would go into and sit in, and there'd be uh, kind of I think there was like old vintage magazines in here, and there's uh, you know the video camera, and and this this is one of the pieces of artwork that's still here, and this this requires so much context that we can't get into in this video. I mean, there's a bait, there's this weird creepy baby doll sitting in here, like. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll open it like this so you get an idea. So you see and then the baby comes up? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what to put in there. That's If anybody has any suggestions. Yeah, what should we put in there? So you do your business. We have uh, a bit of toilet paper here. Usually it stays in this little container so it doesn't get wet. Plastic. And then uh, we use old uh, ash from the wood fireplace in the guest cabin to uh, dump into the outhouse afterwards and that eliminates all the smell. So you're, you're kind of keeping the cycle within itself. Actually, this is something a Patreon supporter asked about that symbol up there. That's Marginal Man. Yeah, that's Marginal Man. That's my uh, my alter ego, I used to call it, when I was more in the art bit and business, you know, being an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's something that we might get into later in the video. But first, we're going to talk about the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. Good, good sponsor. Skillshare, if you didn't already know, is an online learning community where you can deepen existing passions, explore new interests, and get lost in your own creativity. Now, perhaps you don't have a humongous shop like my dad has to start your woodworking career, but Skillshare is a place where you can develop the skills and get the little push you might need to start that next project. Maybe it's something creative like building stuff with wood or baking or drawing, or perhaps it's something that's more career focused like developing a business or getting more involved in entrepreneurialism. Skillshare has literally thousands of classes created by professionals to help curious people like you start on their next big thing. Now, perhaps you're not a master class level carpenter like my dad is. Join the club. But Skillshare can help you kickstart that project or idea by providing you with the knowledge to make it happen. Skillshare has classes for all levels of ability. They have a woodworking course that introduces you to the basic tools that you'll need to get started. But they also have a class on letter carving. So it's really up to you and your interests. So if you're looking to try something out risk-free, then click the link down in the description where the first thousand people from this channel get a free premium two-month free Skillshare membership trial. Okay, but now we're gonna go down and make my dad uncomfortable again by filming him and we're going to talk a bit about how creativity can help us build a better world. I found this and I, uh, I, I was blown away when I found it. This is uh, one of your old artist statements. Right. From, from an art show that you did. And uh, this is what you wrote as a part of, of it. You said, in a mass produced throwaway culture, I feel it is very important for one person to create one object at a time. Part of the art making practice for me is knowing where all of the materials came from, to have connections to their source. It gives me a responsibility to use them with integrity. Isn't it weird, like, I started this YouTube channel about, like, you don't need to be here to save the planet, and you were writing this about your artistic work that yeah, you that's, did? Yeah, that's about 20 years old, I think. Um, I don't know, I think, I think that that's a really fascinating idea, that, that your creativity is used to make things better. Well, that's, uh... That's what we're all, um, that's what we're all put on earth to do, right? To make things better in our own simple way. There's an etching up on the beam that, you're, that you've yet to put in. You're mm -hmm. gonna carve out the, the phrase. Um, what, what, what's the phrase? Uh, it's a Latin term called, uh, and I probably have the pronunciation incorrect, but it's invidium vium outficium. That's my life statement at this point. It may change, but that's my life statement. It means in English, it means find a way or make a way. 
I mean, you can take that on any level you want. You know, it's it's pretty heroic, but on the other hand, it's 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 what it's what humans do. It's it's what uh, everybody on Earth does. Is they they find uh, they find a way, or they make a way. And I think that in a lot of ways, if you kind of look at what's gone on with the cabin, there's so many layers to that that whether you even kind of manifested it deliberately in that moment, like the shovel in the back, the World War Memorial piece, right? The use of materials that are local. I think I think if you're lucky and you're fortunate, you spend your life writing a story, and if you're if you're conscious and you're willing to look at it, you can find that story and you can write that story. So you can build this building and it's not about anything other than building the building. Once the building's finished, it's then not important because it was the process to get there that was the important thing. Right. People always think, well, we need to create a sustainable future. And they, it's, it's very difficult to process that getting there is, is what it is. It's not that we will arrive somewhere someday and that will be the idyllic, perfect world that we all hope to live in. But it's us all deciding that we should just try. We should all just decide to build the guest cabin. It all makes sense eventually. <laughs> that was the the like most wise but like least wise thing i've ever heard it all makes sense eventually no it does if you if you stay on the trail and you know thinking about it it all will make sense and that's that's hope you know god you came here for a cabin tour video. It is hard to imagine that we would have reached this TED talk here at the end, um, but I wanna thank you for uh, watching this video, for hanging out with my dad and I as we talk about the uh, amazing cabin. And uh, if you are subscribed to this channel, which you very much should be, then we will see you in the next one. I mean, maybe not him, but you'll, you'll see me. Maybe. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> that was great. <laughs>